And don't claim that you're old, okay? Don't claim that. <laughs> Actually, can I be honest? I, I hope so too. The Lord, actually, I was in the gym recently, and I had this thought, and I didn't know if it was the Lord or myself, but I think it was the Lord, and um, I thought to myself, hmm, I want to live into my 100s, and to be honest, I, I, I actually feel like God, there's something about longevity that the Lord wants to put back in his people. If this is a crossover era and a Caleb a company is arising, <laughs> come on. Then at 80, they're going to be like they were at 40. Come on. There's something that God is reviving in these days we haven't seen in a long time. I believe there is a time coming we're going to say... you. Dead at 70 and 80, that's very, very young. So if you're in here and you feel like that's old, break away from agreement with that because I actually believe God's saying, I want my people to live longer. I need some salt and light in the earth. Come on. So I believe that I will be over 100 if the Lord should tarry or whatever. All right. Well, anyway, I saw young and old, older. And um, I began to know, or I said, um, in this dream, I said, I, I began to pray in the dream what my message was supposed to be here. And suddenly I knew that my message had to do with the sign of Jonah. I began to pray and prophesy in the dream about the sign of Jonah. And I began to prophesy and pray, and, and I declared that the sign of Jonah is all about resurrection power and the restoration of life. So, I'm going to jump from there and talk about something that happened and it happened recently, and it just captured my heart. And here's what it was. It was a dream that I had. Now, in um, 2018, Kelly and I and our kids, we moved to Colorado Springs. And while we were out there, we met a gentleman and his family. And they were missionaries, and he ended up, um, I don't know how you say it, getting or contract. I don't know what it is. He came down with uh, ALS. And so he, he had that, I think, when we were there, when we moved there, he had already had it for about five years. And we saw him progressively kind of, you know, get worse and worse. And I don't know how the disease totally operates, but I know it's kind of like a, you know, eats the muscle away. And it's pretty brutal. To me, it's just demonic. And, you know, I remember early on, having some dreams with him and seeing him healed and but we ended up moving away and and I did end up praying I, I felt in my heart to go pray in his house for I remember weekly for a season of time go into his basement and just pray for him and you know what's interesting is that I mean there's been several times he's had conversations with his family where he said well, I'm I'm probably not going to make it to next Christmas. And every year it's passed, and he's still making it. But we've not seen a, we've seen some slowing of that, but we've also seen it progress. Anyway, Kelly and I, we ended up moving to Texas in 2021, and we really just lost touch with the family. And so I hadn't really thought of him. Um, from time to time, we'll pray for him, and that was about it. And then about a week ago, don't have the specific date, but about a week ago, I had a dream. And in the dream, I walked into this couple's house. 
And when I walked in, I didn't know what was necessarily happening except I saw a huge celebration going on. And I looked at the wife and she looked at me and she said, she pointed over and said, did you see Steve? And I looked at Steve and Steve was standing up out of his wheelchair, completely healed and restored. He came over and picked me up and I bent over and just wept and rejoiced. And I went up to the wife and I said, how did this happen? And she said, this happened because he read a book called Peoria. So the dream ended. Now, I'm from Peoria. And I knew exactly what the Lord meant. Because the Native American meaning for the, the name Peoria is to dream with the omnipresent one. And the Lord said, the reason this man got his breakthrough is because he was willing to dream with me instead of live by his circumstances. He was not bound by the, the report of a doctor or a man or, or a situation. He had yoked his heart to what I had said and given in dreams. Now it's just interesting because that was the first dream I had had of him in years. And I just thought, why am I getting this dream? And I texted him and his wife that day. The wife responded back pretty quick and said, Andrew, you have no idea what this means right now. He's not doing well. And I just told our family, we probably need to be preparing for his passing. Now, either God is unkind to give a word like that and put a false hope in someone or he's saying I have something more that you need to see that you don't see and if you're willing to open up the book called dream with the omnipresent one there is nothing impossible nothing impossible for them that believe you guys with me I'm shouting, but I just get excited. <laughs> so, to dream with the omnipresent is to know that he, God, has a will, a word, and a heavenly possibility for every place situation and scenario you find yourself he's already there even if you've made your bed in hell there he is see it's possible to dream if your bed is in hell because you don't have to live according to that realm you get to access a dream realm with the omnipresent one so I felt the Lord talk to me and said, Andrew, my people need to understand right now, it's time for them to dream again. Because unless they learn to dream again, they won't access certain heavenly realms that I've called them to access. So Ephesians 2 verse six, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. It's kind of mysterious, isn't it? And yet, it's fully truth and a full reality. Even though sometimes we don't try to... It remains mystery to a lot of us because we have learned if it's mystery, we don't pursue it. You guys following? But the Lord told me one time, when I asked him, I said, Lord, what does it mean to eat the meat of the word? He said, the meat of the word is mystery. Once you begin to walk with me in the realm of mystery, you begin to find the meat of my word. And I felt like God was saying, heavenly realms are a bit of mystery, but you need to know I've given you full right to know the mysteries of the kingdom. 
And <clears throat> so Ephesians, um, Ephesians 1, 3 says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Ephesians 3, he seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. All right, so what am I saying? I'm saying that we have a dwelling place and a citizenship in heaven and in heavenly realms that's rightfully ours through Jesus Christ that sometimes we don't access. But dreams are a gateway to access those heavenly realms. Now here's the deal. The new age and witchcraft is also trying to access heavenly realms. The Lord would call those forbidden gates because there's only one door, there's only one gate. His name is Jesus Christ. When you try to go around him, you're a thief. And the Lord doesn't take nicely to thieves. So, I do have a point to this message. I'll find it sometime in this in this talk. <laughs> but I felt in my heart, Lord, why would you give that drink? Now, on the day of atonement this year, I delivered this message about accessing heaven's realms through dream gates. And on the morning I awoke from, or on the morning I was getting ready to prepare this message in Wisconsin, I woke with a dream and the dream was I saw a young man that I was friends with in college or uh, high school. And I haven't seen him probably since high school. I don't think I've actually talked to him since high school. We were close friends and he was a party animal. He was completely not a believer. <laughs> the probably the farthest end, the other spectrum of, of that, but we were friends. And on the morning of the Day of Atonement, getting ready to, to speak this message, I woke with the dream that this man was trying to call me on the phone. And in the dream, I was busy. I couldn't take his call. But I had a word of knowledge in the dream that he was calling to tell me that he had given his life to Jesus and was radically on fire. So in the dream, I saw he left a voicemail. I listened to it, and it was exactly what my word of knowledge was, that sure enough, he was telling me, I've given my life to Jesus. I'm on fire for him. Now, this was all a dream, but I wake up from that, and I'm thinking, how bizarre. Lord, earlier in the week, you gave me the dream about the man in the wheelchair who in real life is not out of his wheelchair. And yet I'm seeing him on the other side in victory, fully delivered, healed, set free, seeing the disease busted off of him. And now today, as I'm preparing to deliver a message about dream gates, I have a dream of this man, who to my knowledge is still on this side of the spectrum, whatever you wanna call that, he's in darkness. What are, you, what are you trying to do to me? Why do you play these games, Lord? And I felt like the Lord says, because this is what my people need to start to move into our heavenly realms of miraculous possibilities. 
that they can't often see if they're living in this realm. They need to know they're seated in a much higher place, far above all principality, all power, with me. And every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms is theirs to partake of. And if you can get up where you're seated, you can begin to access it in this earth realm. Make sense? I don't shout on the Elijah Streams episodes. <laughs> Thought about it a couple times, but I'm like, I don't think it's the right setting. But this feels like a good setting to shout. <laughs> so, um, this is an expert, e expert, an excerpt. And I'm, I was gonna say I'm no expert. This is an excerpt from my book, uh, Dreams to Save a Nation. I can't show you it, it's digital, it's ebook. Yeah. Anybody have it? Yeah. Hey, come on. I'll pray for the rest of you. <laughs> Just kidding. It's on my website, vanquishpw.com. Oh, vanquishpw.com, called Dreams to Save a Nation. Oh, by the way, the, you guys, the in-laws were amazing in helping us get this book rolling. And Johnny in-law did the foreword. Amen. Come on. But I wanted to just pull out a, just a, a segment of that introduction that I say here. So this is from the book. I say this. Throughout the biblical narrative from Genesis to Revelation, a key way that God begins the salvation process for peoples and for nations is through dreams and prophecy. And I say that I'll leave the reader with the joy of scriptural exploration to discover all those specific times and places where God employs this key for humanity. But you will be amazed to see from the biblical record that when God sets out to save a nation, he first sends forth his word among them. It suddenly stands up. In that place, light suddenly dawns. In the dark of night, a dream breaks in. In the despair of oppressive conditions, a prophecy is uttered. At the entrance of his word, there is light. When God sends his dreams and prophecies for a nation, the narratives of darkness are met by a superior force, the spirit of prophecy. Prophetic dreams invite us to see and to hear the report of the Lord. They contain supernatural possibilities for seemingly impossible situations. Prophetic dreams are invitations for participation. And I say for the purpose of this book, the, these dreams are invitations for intercession, decree, and declaration. Dreams and prophecy carry the essence of God's heart and his will for a people and a nation even in spite of their current condition. Dreams and prophecy are containers of grace. They are fuel for fire. They are propellants for perseverance. Dreams are strategic blueprints for victory. So I wanted to share that. I felt like that captures what I feel like God wants to say about even even why, part of why we're here this weekend is I believe he's called us as a company of people, as his ecclesia, to access some heavenly realms that we have right to through Jesus Christ. But he needs us to get into a realm where we can see what we can't see with our own natural eyes. Amen? Um, let me go back up. You know, I told you that dream I had about 
Um, on Monday, what's today? Friday. <laughs> Monday, about this meeting, and I said it was about this, um, the sign of Jonah. And I remembered that on August 1st, I also had a dream. Sorry, April 1st. I also had a dream that included the sign of Jonah. And I'm going to share that with you. This was April 1st, 2024. I had this dream. In my dream, I was driving to deliver the word of the Lord. In my dream, I never know what that word is often. It just eventually comes. But I knew in the dream that I was delivering this word on the day. So listen, on the day before the 2024 elections. On the way to get to the place that I needed to deliver this word, I passed a large building with a sign that simply said, Jonah. At that moment, I knew instinctively that it was referring to the book of Jonah. And I had a revelation. It was connected to Trump. I knew it was very essential for me to get the word of the Lord out about what was ahead, so I began to write the word down. And I shared in this word what I saw in my previous dream. Okay, so I didn't share this yet. This was a heavy night of dreaming. I had two dreams one night. The first dream on April 1st was that I was standing in a mirror looking at myself in the mirror. Not, I wasn't trying to be vain. I don't know what I was doing. Just looking in the mirror, looking at myself. And behind me was a TV. And across the TV, I saw that I had somehow entered. So as I'm looking into the mirror, because of what I saw on the TV, I now knew I was standing in the future. And on the TV behind me, as I'm looking in the mirror, the TV behind me said, Donald Trump wins 2024 election. <clears throat> and in the dream, he, Trump appears on the TV. As I'm still looking in the mirror, he appears on the TV behind me. But as you look in the mirror and he's there, it looks like he's actually in the room with me. So I was like, good opportunity for a selfie. <laughs> yeah. try to capture those moments when you can you know <laughs> and I took a selfie and the picture developed like it was like one of those automatic Polaroid things actually my daughter thinks that's cool and she has one of those that the old is in again you know um <laughs> so here's the interesting thing is I saw a girl or a woman all I knew is I didn't see her face didn't know who she was I knew that somehow there was a connection with the media and social media and she attempted to take the picture and sure enough, she did take it. And I was getting worried because I couldn't find it. And I wanted to go look for it. And in the dream, it didn't end up with me finding it. However, the spirit of prophecy came on me and I said, even though th there's been an attempt to steal this, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. <clears throat> and I can't tell you the way I felt in the dream. I knew that I knew it would not matter. Can I just say that? Because I don't know what that all means, but it might mean taken, lost, I don't know. And yet the Lord has a higher word about it. 
I don't care what they say. I don't care what it looks like. When this thing and the dust settles, it's not going to matter. That was the first dream on April 1st. The second dream was I was going to deliver the word of the Lord on the day before the elections. You following me? And I began to write down what I was, um, where did it go? I began to write down what I saw in my previous dream about the television headline with Trump as the winner. And I wrote down that much of what we had been experiencing for the last four years was for the purpose of awakening. Johnny and Lowe. <laughs> And I said it was the purpose of awakening and it allowed corruption to surface. I said that this has primed our society to desire and to desire the active reform of systems and structures according to true justice, equity and righteousness. I continued to write my word down and said that getting Trump back into the presidential position for America would send us into a timeline of blessing as we could never have imagined. I then wrote in the word, Nineveh was doomed without hope. But when the sign of Jonah came forth, they were rescued from destruction. At this point in the dream, I realized I was writing this on social media and I pressed send. You ever press something? You're <laughs> <laughs> Actually, true story. Kelly will call me. She's like, I'm experiencing a intense amount of witchcraft. What did you post on social media right now? <laughs> I'm like, I'll delete it. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so I press send. At that moment, I can't describe fully what happened, but this word went out across the airwaves or airways. How do you ever say that? To millions of people in moments. It went viral in mere minutes. You know, dreams are cool this way. Sometimes you don't, a picture's worth a thousand words, right? Sometimes a feeling the same way. It's like you feel something that's hard to express with words. But I'll say it this way. When I saw the word go out, in other words, the word was this. There was, a, there was a decree of destruction that was coming. But the sign of Jonah came forth. And the word went viral. And in the dream, I could see and feel the hope coming back into the people of the United States. Especially the church. Now, I can't tell you it's hard to express because we say hope all the time. You need to understand something about what I felt. It felt like something that had been in a coma. Shocked back to life. It was like a sense of purpose and destiny. A sense of recovered possibility that we never thought possible before. And here's what it was like. It was like we were those who dreamed. Now the word, when I delivered this word in Wisconsin, well, I didn't deliver the sign of Jonah word but I delivered this word about the need 
to access heavenly realms through dreams. After I preached that message, maybe I'm giving too much details, but I went to go use the restroom. Because I'm human, and uh, anyway. <laughs> I'm trying to give you context for what happened. I was going to use the restroom, and as I was going to use the restroom, it was like the Holy Spirit arrested me and said, there's a book coming, and he gave me the title, We Were Like Those Who Dreamed. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, I'll tell you this, what I felt by the Lord in that moment was that this gathering was of a company of people where we would set in motion, we would seal something, we would establish something that begins the great exodus out of captivity and a return into a promised land of inheritance and destiny. And when the Lord restores the fortunes of Zion, we'll be like those who dreamed. <clears throat> that scripture is Psalm 126, one, a song of a sense. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Now here's what, uh, it's called the Benson Commentary. It says this, a, this was a restoration so complete, so strange and unlooked for, brought about at once without any endeavors used on the side of Israel, seemed in all respects as a dream. And the parties concerned when they saw and heard such things could scarcely believe themselves to be awake. That day is coming. That day is coming. Now, the Hebrew word that's rendered, um, or the Hebrew for the phrase, like them that dreamed, will be like them that dreamed. That phrase in the Hebrew, according to Dr. Hammond, I don't know who Dr. Hammond is, but this is what he said, along with many other expositors, translated that phrase, them that dreamed as them that are recovered to health, a sense which the word will bear and may be very proper as signifying that uh, that this wonderful change was like unexpected ease after exquisite pain or the recovery of health after a very long and tedious sickness. Now, I want to say this. Jesus said, that a wicked and perverse generation asks for, asks for a sign, right? No sign will be given except the sign of Jonah. He's saying, you're looking for some sort of sign in America. But I believe this also. It's not just okay to believe that God, God, you're going to do it. If you've heard anything that Johnny said for the past 10 years, no, I don't know. We have a responsibility. It's our turn. It's our turn. We're the salt, we're the light, we're the ecclesia. And so that's why it becomes really important that we break free from the narratives of darkness and the narratives that are oppressing us under a realm that God says you don't live under this realm, you're seated in a, in a higher realm far above. And dreams are a way to begin to capture that, that realm, that sight, that view 
of what he has available. Quick story. I remember, and I'm going somewhere. Are y'all following so far? Okay. Um, there was a man, I'm, I'm going to do a long story short because it is a long story. <laughs> But there was a man who was um, he was a principal of a high school. I don't know if it was a high school or a grade school. Do you remember, Kelly? Anyway, he was a principal of a school. And every morning, he would get up and pray for the entire school at 4.30 in the morning. Isn't that awesome? That's, that's, that's rising. And the most serious time was I got a call from the family and they said, we were in Tennessee and he was on a ride at an amusement park and had a brain aneurysm. And uh, he's in the hospital. They had to do some surgery on the brain. He's in a coma. And we got, we went to prayer, my wife and I, and we raised up a team of intercessors and there was a lot of people praying. But I took personal interest in this. We did. We really felt like this was a burden to carry the Lord. And um, after a while, his vitals and everything just went down, 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 down. Now it was turning into um, several, several weeks being in a coma. And the doctors finally called the family and said, you better fly down here because he only has probably 24 hours to live. And so... One of the things that had happened, though, a few days prior was that my daughter had a dream. And in the dream, she saw this man out of his bed of coma. And that he was fully mobile, alert, awake. And he was eating with his family at a place called Monocle's Pizza. Anybody know Monocle's Pizza? I'd be surprised if there was <laughs> Midwest here. <so. clears> now, we told this to the, fan, the mom, the, the wife. And she said, well, you know what's crazy about your dream that you guys wouldn't know is that it's been our family tradition for years. Every Sunday after church, we go eat Monocle's Pizza together. Wow. At that moment... I said, this is more than a dream and a nice wish. God's giving us something to lock our teeth into and say, There's, this is a gateway to the heavenly realms to access the miracles that God has available. I, we tried to rally the truth. Who drew a picture of it? Oh, yeah, my daughter drew a picture of the dream, eating at the Monocle's Pizza, put it in the man's hospital room. I love that. That's so cool. Now, here's the deal. I don't fault anybody for this because when you look, when you look at the situation, it literally looks, I mean, the doctors, you've got specialists saying he won't recover. And if by chance he would miraculously recover. He and um, the prophets in the region said, we believe the Lord says it's his time. I was like, well, maybe you heard that, but I've got a different and a higher word right now. <laughs> I got a higher revelation than that right now. So I can't bend to that one. I've got to bend to this one. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Now I'll, I'll uh, say this is that I, I don't know how much faith I actually had, except I was like, I was like, well, God, we owe it. We owe it to you to pursue this revelation even if, even if we don't succeed. You purchased something at the cross for us. Why should we let that go to waste? So we ended up praying for this man. And long story short, we get into the hospital room when there's 24 hours left, supposedly. And I'll never forget, we were in prayer. And um, I... 
Kelly was in Illinois, and I drove down to Tennessee. I asked the family if I could go pray in the hospital room while Kelly and a team of intercessors were back home praying. And as I'm praying over the man, I get a vision of a snake wrapped around his throat. And I heard the Lord say, cut that thing. Kelly called about five minutes later and said, hey, we were just in prayer. One of our guys here just said, there's a snake wrapped around his throat. You need to cut that thing. <laughs> I said, how do you do that? <laughs> well, by faith, you just take the sword of the spirit and shabba. <laughs> I don't think there's a formula to it, but we just constricting thing is on his life and we cut it off. Now, nothing happened, but the only thing that started to happen was I kept getting this vision over and over and over of me whispering to the man, putting my hand on his arm, whispering the word breakthrough. But I didn't want to do it because I thought it looked weird. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. So I thought, well, what if the doctors and the nurses come in? I don't want to be whispering to this man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Well, finally, when nothing else works, you just got to go with God and do the vision. So finally, when after a couple hours of resisting, just whispered, went over to the man. No one was in the room, whispered, um, or put my hand on his arm and whispered, right through. And at that moment, the man shoots up out of the bed. And, and he begins to fall off the bed. <laughs> and I said, help, <laughs> doctors, nurses. They come running in. I said, what'd you do? I said, I just whispered. <laughs> now here's what happened. He didn't come out of his coma at that point. But I knew power was just loosed. And from that moment forward, his vitals completely shifted. He had an accelerated turnaround, came out of the coma. And weeks later, we ended up celebrating with the family around the table eating Monocle's pizza. Come on! <laughs> I learned a lot from that. If I can just say it, everything stood against. All hope, in hope, against hope, you just believe. And, and that's kind of the posture we took. And I learned that there's more power in that than feeling confident. You just stand on God's word, regardless of how you feel, regardless of what it looks like and, and the warfare going on in your own mind that says, this is ridiculous. And I believe that we've come to a point in America, and even right now why, we're, why we are here, is because it's time to dream with the omnipresent one for our nation, like we've never dreamed before. <laughs> I believe God is saying, I need my people to come up here with me. I need you to see what I see. I need you to hear what I'm saying. And I need your agreement and faith in this hour. I believe this is a moment where the Lord is saying, don't let this moment pass you by. Don't strike the arrows only a few times. Get up higher. See what I have to show you about the next several generations of Americans. See what I have to show you about the future of healthcare. See what I have to show you about the future of the media mountain. See what I have to show you. Does this make sense? I mean, what, what if we begin to see what we think is absolutely impossible right now? I'm not even kidding. I've started to try, try to break every limitation off what I think is possible for America, for my own life, but also for America. Uh, how about this? How about we re repent of saying, nah, that'll never, that'll never. No, let's come out of agreement with that. I want to play a clip, which I feel captures in my heart. And it, uh, it's the Batman clip. By the way, on the way here, 
I said, Lord, what um, movie should I watch? I'm glad he said what he said. I felt the pull towards Batman. Specifically, The Dark Knight Rises. And, and as I'm watching, I didn't know why. I honestly didn't know why. But as I'm watching it, and especially one scene, the Lord said, this is the sign of Jonah. And this is the word that's going to go viral across America. And so I want to play this, uh, if you guys have it. And um, the first couple moments of it, like there's a little... Well, I'll say it this way. The enemy of Batman put him in a pit. Anybody seen Dark Knight Rises? Tell the truth. <laughs> Ooh, if anybody has not seen it, you, your homework assignment, go watch The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight Rises. The Dark Knight was... But anyway. Um, the... The portion I want to show up here is that Batman was put in a pit. Essentially, he was in his grave. There was no hope or chance of escape. Only one had ever done it. But I felt like God was saying that what we're, what we're witnessing on this video is what we're going to witness and we're going to prophesy across this nation that the sign of Jonah is going to be seen by a generation, is going to be seen by a nation, is going to reign in its place. Play this clip. Oh, do we have lights? It's a prophetic moment to declare right now over America. Father, I just, I just thank you that because you rose from the pit, we also rise with you. I thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you were in the belly of the earth for three days. Three nights, and Lord, that you were raised to life. And we thank you, God, that just as this world had no hope apart from your sign, apart from your raising, God, we say again, America has no hope apart from the sign of Jonah. We pray, we pray from this day forth, even from this new season forward, that America will behold the sign of Jonah. That Jesus will be glorified. We pray resurrection life and power into America. We pray, awake, awake and rise. Awake, awake and rise. Awake, awake and rise. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Awesome, Andrew. They are opening the doors again at 615. The meeting will be, our closing meeting will be at 7. That was amazing, Andrew. Do you know what? Am I right? What did your friends call you when you teenager, 20s? Okay, was one of them whales? Yeah, yeah. Whales. Okay, he was called whales. He's doing this teaching on the sign of Jonah. Andrew Whalen, and they called him whales. So anyway. All right, so you're dismissed. And 6.15, the doors will open, and we'll be here at 7 o'clock. And we're going to have a grand finale with the Lord. Let's see.